welcome again to this python programming course in this particular lesson we are going to study the introduction to the python programming so the python program is designed by this guido von Ra rossum he named the language that is based on monty python's flying circus so based on the circus name he has given to the python name to the python programming language it is not based on the snake name it is based on the circus name so python definition of python programming is python is an interpreted general purpose high level programming language with easy syntax and dynamic semantics we'll see one by one these concepts so python is an interpreted programming language so we have seen in first lesson that interpreted programming languages are the languages in which your code is interpreted line by line or executed line by line on the computers so it, your whole program is not converted get converted into the executable code your each line or each instruction from your code is interpreted or executed line on your computer so as the definition says that it is an interpreted programming language but the python program follows the hybrid approach so python is both compiled as well as interpreted language so using compiler the python program get converted into the bytecode the extension of that bytecode is dot pyc this and that bytecode get interpreted on your virtual machines so on virtual machines your interpreter is there and that pyc code or the bytecode get interpreted line by line on your machines so python is not fully interpreted and not fully compiled it has a hybrid approach so first it gets converted into the bytecode and that bytecode is executed or interpreted on your machines on your virtual machines then in definition one more thing we have seen that it is a general purpose programming language so general purpose means we can use this python programming language to design variety of application means we can use it for designing web application we can use it in robotics we can use it in artificial intelligence we can use it in internet of things that is iot it has a diverse it has a diversity that in most of the applications we can use it, the python programming language so it is a general purpose programming language then it is a high level programming language so in first lesson we have seen that it is a high what is high level programming language so high level programming language is the language which is understood by the user or human then it has easy syntax so in this particular picture you can see that there is one code written in c programming language and at the right side we have seen that the code which is written in python python programming language so when you are seeing the code which is written in c programming language the first line is in int x equals to 10 int y equals to 5 printf percent d comma x plus y so to declare any variables we need to provide the data types to print the results we need to provide the format specifiers so we need to remember that which data type we have used to define the declare the variables and what kind of format specifier we need to use when we are displaying it so we need to remember those things but that is not the case for python programming language we can directly assign any value to any variable and there is no need to remember the which uh, format specifier is for which variable we have created so directly we can print the result so the syntax of the python programming language are easy than other programming languages then it has a dynamic semantics means variables are dynamic objects so everything in python is an object so here also we can differentiate this concept dynamic semantics using c comparing the c and python code 
so if you see the code which is written in c programming language so int x equals to 10 int y equals to 5 then again we have uh, after the printf we have assigned x equal to 10.78 so when c programming language is a statically typed programming language before using any variable in your program you have to declare it or that declaration states that which kind of value that particular variable can be variable can store so int x equals to 10 so int means the data type of that variable x that is integer data type and that x variable can store only integer data not characters not floating point value not any other value into that variable so we can only store the integers value into that variable so that is defined by the data type and if you later on we have assigned x equals to 10.78 but that 10.78 value is not stored into the variable x because it is a static lip typed means we have initially declared that this particular x variable can store only integer values so only integral part of that 10.78 is assigned to x that is 10 is assigned to x so it is a statically typed means previously or before using any variable we have defined that which kind of value that variable can use that is a statically typed and in python code you can see that x equals to 10 y equals to 5 we have not defined any data type before declaring any variable so we can assign any kind of variable to assign any kind of value to a variable so we can assign strings we can assign floating point numbers we can assign boolean data we can assign characters any kind of value we can assign to a variable there is no previous declaration for the variable is required as well as the value assigned to the variable is the runtime we can decide which kind of value we can assign to the variable so it is a dynamically typed programming language so it has a dynamic semantics so whatever the value you assign to that variable it becomes its data type means if you assign integer value then x becomes an integer variable if you assign floating point value then x becomes a floating point number then if you assign string value then x becomes a string so depends on what kind of value you assign to a variable it defines its data type so no need to remember what kind of variable we have declared initially and we uh, we need to specify the format specifier or we need to remember that what is the declaration of that variable so it is a dynamically typed programming language so c programming is a statically typed means before declaration we need to remember that what kind of value or data type we have specified for that variable and depending on that we need to assign the values to it but in python programming languages we can assign any kind of value to that variable at any point of uh, step in the program then features of python programming language so as we seen that it is easy to learn it is open source and cross platform so open source means the code or the python programming language is a open source we don't need to purchase it it is easily available or freely available programming language then it is a cross platform means we can whatever the program we have designed using python programming language are executed on different operating systems so it is a platform independent we can say cross platform means it is a platform independent programming language we can run our python program on any operating system it is interpreter based so we have seen that it is interpreted programming language so we can use it to design gui programming we can use it for database connectivity means multi paradigm approach is there for python programming language we can design any kind of application means general it is a general purpose programming language and it is a multi paradigm approach means 
we can use this python programming language as a procedural language for designing simple application we can use it as a object oriented object oriented programming language there is a concept of class objects in the python programming language we can use it as a functional programming language is also so it has a multi paradigm approach it is a extensible programming language means if we have designed any program in using python programming languages later on we can add in new features into it so it is a extensible programming language it has a last large set of libraries standard libraries which are used to create your ai related application machine learning application or web application so it has a large set of libraries and it has a developer communicate community so if you have if you have any problem related to your application you can easily put that particular problem on the community forum and you will get the solution for your problem so it is it has a developer community so these are the features of python programming language now where we can use this uh, python programming so in data science in machine learning to design the web application in image processing or computer visions we can use it then in embedded systems and iot internet of things we can use it and scheduling job scheduling and automation we can use it so there is a diverse field of applications of the python language using which we can design now next is how to install this python interpreter so visit this particular website to download the python interpreter so visit this particular link download this latest version of the python programming language the latest now version is the uh, python 3.12 so you can download this python 3.12 from this website and just double click on this particular software you are able follow the steps given in that uh, window and you you are able to execute the means you are able to install this particular software now how we can use uh, which editor we can use for uh, writing this code for code of python so you can use any editor once you install this particular python interpreter you can use any editor to execute your uh, code so i prefer to use the vs code so how you can use this vs code to execute the python programming code so first way to write your program using vs code python program save your fo file in using dot py extension the extension of the python file is dot py then open the terminal uh, in your vs code and just type the command that is python your file name dot py means type your file name so python space file name it will execute your code now second way if you don't want to type the command to execute your code then just add two extensions into the vs code first extension is python extension it is given here that is using which you can able to you can able to add the extension that is microsoft intellisoft uh, extension intellisense extension and second one is the code runner extension that these two extensions you have to include in the vs code so once you include these two extensions in your python code you are able to see this arrow like extension the, at the right corner upper right corner so using just click on that arrow button you are able to execute your program so either you can use the command to execute your program or add these two extensions in your vs code you will see this arrow button and when you click on this arrow button you you can able to execute your python code in the vs code now uh, how we can write the <coughs> python first program so it 
using interactive mode you can write the code or using the scripting mode you can write your code so to use the interactive mode means we have to uh, use the python interpreter directly so to invoke that python interpreter type the command python on your command prompt so open the command prompt give the cmd command uh, in your search button it will open the command prompt for you and type the python command so if you have installed the python on your computer then you can able to execute this particular uh, python command so just give the python command on your command prompt you are able to see the three arrows the name what the which version of the python is installed on your machine so related information is there after that you can just type the line that is print hello world so it will display immediately after that when you press the enter the hello world statement on your console or on your command prompt so this is one way to execute your python code that is interactive mode directly on the python interpreter you can able to execute the code and second way that is script mode programming that is you have you can create a python file to create your program and then you can execute the code so first use if you want to use vs code then create a new file into that create a new python file into that then write your code save your file using .py extension and run your code either using uh, command based or using the that using extensions you can execute your code then how you can see the byte code in your program so open the command prompt open your file into the <coughs> interactive shell so just now we have seen that you just type the python command on your command prompt you can able to open the python shell or interactive mode then in that import the pi underscore compile library so in that particular library one function is there that is compile so pi underscore compile dot compile provide your file name so immediately after that you will see the which file it is created that the extension of that file is dot pyc and using that you can able to see the which code byte code that particular file has been created so in the next session we'll see how to create a program in python program uh, using the vs code how to see this particular byte code also in the next session we will see now next important concept in the python is the indentation so indentation is a leading white space before any statement in the python so the most important concept in this python programming when you write any code into the python indentation is required so indentation is a leading white space before any statement in the python so it improves the readability of the code as well as it helps to indicate the block of code so here again you can able to see that one side left side is c programming is written and right side the python program is written so in c programming language the curly brackets are used to define the block of code so there is a one statement is written that is if name equals to sam then print the hello sam statement so that print hello sam statement is written inside the curly braces in the c program and in the python program it some spaces are given before the print statement after if and the hello statement is written so that spaces are nothing but the indentation that is white space indentation is given so to define this print type statement print statement print hello sam statement is a part of if block that is given by this indentation so to indicate that this is a block of code we use the indentation now how this indentation works just now we have seen that in c programming we use the block that is curly braces to indicate the block of code and here we use the indentation so if we don't give any indentation in your code we can we cannot recognize which part of the code uh, which line belongs to which code 
or which block so in left side you can see that the code which is without indentation so we have if block after that immediately in the same uh, column we write the same print statement again we write the else statement then again print dude and print how are you statement so all are are the written on symbols on same column in your statement there is no indentation provided here so you cannot able to recognize that in the else part whether the hello dude and how are you are the part of else or not so if you consider the c programming language if you doesn't provide curly braces the for statement immediately after written the uh, your if block that is considered as a part of if block but that is not the case for uh, this python programming language so whatever the indent indented code is there so that code we can consider as a part of python code so at the right side we can able to see that the print sam statement is the part of if block print hello dude statement is the part of else block and how are you is not the part of if as well as else so this is the part of your whole program so using indentation we can able to recognize that which part of the code belongs to which block okay so there are some rules for defining the indentation so minimum one space is necessary to represent on indented statements so either you can use a tab or single space you can define how many white spaces you you are uh, needed for giving the indentation for your program so you can decide so minimum one space is necessary to represent your indented statement second rule is the first line of python code cannot have indentation so the first line should start with the first column of your line itself it should not be indented one then third rule is indentation is mandatory to define a block of code so as we have seen in the above image that to recognize that which statements belongs to which block we need the indentation so indentation is mandatory to define the block of code and the number of spaces must be uniform so if you have multiple statements in your code then all those multiple statements from one block should belongs or should have uniform spaces or every statement whatever the indentation you provide in your program all the indented code should follow the uniform spaces so this uh, these are the basic things we need to learn before actual starting with the program python programming language thank you